So general impressions of uh, lefamulinge general place in therapy. So if we kind of look at the landscape and the treatment of patients with acute acquired bacterial pneumonia, um, drugs with IV and oral bioequivalent formulations, we're, we're limited. You know, if, um, we, we mostly use fluoroquinolones, and each year we're getting increasing warnings from the FDA. Um, the most recent box warning with the fluoroquinolones is a aortic aneurysm and aortic rupture. And what they say in their, in their recent release is high-risk patients, patients with hypertension, congestive heart failure, um, patients with a stroke history, um, one in 333 patients who receive a quinolone are at risk for an aortic aneurysm. So really we're getting at a point now where, you know, high-risk patients, you know, these are patients who have community-acquired bacterial pneumonia. So we really do need equivalents to fluoroquinolones. So we look at lefamulin, um, you know, met the definition of non-inferiority in its clinical trials. Um, in this analysis here, we had a, a similar time to clinical response, both looking at clinical stability and symptom resolution. Um, this was true overall, an important subset of patients, those with different port scores, three and four, um, also di different disease severity and age categories. So what we have is a new drug, an equivalent um, uh, to the fluoroquinolones, that it produces a, a, a similar um, response. Um, a few things that makes lefamulin attractive, um, much like a fluoroquinolone, has IV and oral bioequivalent formulations. Um, you could take it with or without food, uh, which is very important when we use drugs in the outpatient setting. And overall appears to be safe and doesn't carry a lot of the adverse events that are, late, that are attached to fluoroquinolones. 